WeRiseMag.com Do you feel that there's a drop in anime? Like, uh, if you used to go to the Best Buy and see a uh, you know, couple rows of anime, and now all of a sudden... I think, <coughs> I think there's a drop there. Yeah. I don't think there's a drop in anime at all. In fact, if anything, I, don't think, I think the anime community has never been stronger. Um, and I think, in part, uh, I'm not an analyst, but I would say it's because of the prolific, prolific, prolificness, prol the amount of <laughs> of conventions you know 10 years ago there might be two or three conventions a month now there's four and five a week yeah. all over the world yeah. and it is a global and I think it's these conventions that are really driving the industry you know the, con the you don't need to worry about it in the best buys anymore because everyone wants to download it it's now getting on Cartoon Network it's just it's readily accessible on your computer so there's the you know the you don't see it in the DVD form as much. Yeah. Uh, and then also, even when you do, I think they're buying them at conventions. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't, so I don't think that you need to worry about the, it's not in Best Buy or Walmart or whatever, you know, so. But I think the industry's never been stronger. Yeah, um, do you feel that sales are stronger or do you think there's just too much downloading that, that's hurting? Well, I, I, I really can't speak too much to that. I just, uh, I know, you know, uh, just earlier today, uh, a guy walked up and was talking about how he's in charge of piracy, uh, or find, you know, stopping piracy at this convention. Yeah. And uh, Mike McFarland uh, was sitting next to me and he goes, you know, it's great to hear these kids really take the responsibility and are, are trying to stop it. I don't know, uh, I can't, like I said, I can't really speak to it because I don't pirate. And I know it goes on and it will always go on. Yeah. You'll never eliminate it. Yeah. It's you know, just the fact of life. But I do think that more people are realizing, look, if you keep stealing it, I mean, the bottom line is people want to make money. Yeah. They're not doing this because they love the art form. I mean, they may love it, but in the end, it's, they want to make the dollar or the yen or the ruble or whatever it is, yeah. you know. So if, I think people are really starting to savvy up to that. And, and uh, uh, but also, you know, with the stuff being downloadable, uh, stuff doesn't necessarily cost as much to produce. You don't have to make, you know, yeah. million DVDs. Just put it online, you know, and let people download it for a buck ninety nine or whatever it may be, you know. And I think now you're trying to find that happy medium where the, you know, kids are going, well, I can I can spend a dollar ninety nine to download it, you know, an episode right? instead of forty dollars for the director's cut, you know, <laughs> collector's edition. Oh, we were just talking about that. That there is now. Instead of putting out the whole set on Blu-ray, they'll do half of it Blu-ray, half of it DVD for some reason. Some of the animes are like that. It's very strange, but obviously I guess it's a well, and it, Yeah, and I think partially it's because, you know, back when DVDs came out, you know, when I first started, we were still watching them on VHS tapes. Yeah. <laughs> and then the DVDs came out and everyone start, you know, you're having to go back and put all the old stuff onto DVD. The new stuff, only DVD. In fact, actually, there was a period of DVD and VHS, so there's like a transition period. But then it got into, you know, Blu-ray and stuff. Well, I think people are not as eager to buy it um, necessarily because they're afraid they're going to buy a Blu-ray. And then, you know, six months from now, there's new technology, you know, Green Dog, you know, or whatever it may be. It's just, you know, it's like, well, now my Blu-ray seems obsolete, yeah. you know. So I think uh, that's probably why they do that, I guess. Um, do you have your hand in the pot in any other ways in directing or uh, producing or anything like that? I, um, I used to direct at ADV, uh, worked for a couple of years and did a little writing. Um, I just recently helped out a friend of mine, Chris Ayers, um, yes. about six months ago. He needed somebody to fill in and I, I did some directing uh, there. Um, but I don't direct at Funimation. They've got plenty of directors, and, and I live in Houston, so when I I, only, I go up there about once a month to do voice work, okay. and uh, so I really that's pretty much what I'm limiting myself to is just the voice work because I do a lot of other things, and I can't devote myself full time to just you know trying to direct or whatever. Yeah. So. 
And uh, outside of voice acting, do you like do any other acting? Or? Oh yeah, I'm. Uh, I do a lot of uh, uh, voice work. You know, industrial narration, commercial work. Um, I've got a couple of projects that we're working on. Um, that uh, there's one particular animation movie that we're doing. Uh, the, a little production company that I have called Comfort Wheel Productions with some friends. Um, and uh, we've got some projects we're trying to get off the ground, you know, animation stuff. And then I do some film work. Then, uh, did you ever see Dazed and Confused? Yes. I'm the beer delivery guy in Dazed and Confused. <laughs> okay. So, uh, um, you know, just stuff. I mean, in Houston, you kind of get what comes. I also do some production work uh, as a producer for an oil company. You know, okay. and uh, do corporate television kind of stuff. So, you know, it's kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of things. And really all of that stuff enables me to do the voice acting for conventions, or for anime, which helps me go to conventions. Yeah. So, all very circle of Did life. you watch anime before? I did not. No. I did not. I didn't even know what anime was. Okay. I still don't. <laughs> no. Um, I, but I did not watch it. Uh, it was, and it, you know, um, it was 1996. And I had just gotten married. I was doing a comedy show. I was in a band called the PC Cowboys. It was a politically correct country and western band. And we were really, it was a comedy act. And we were doing a comedy show. And this guy named Jason Lee, okay. uh, who's married to Amanda Winley, um, we were talking, he was our opening act. And we got to talking. And he was telling me about this thing called anime. And I was like, what am I? You know. And he goes, well, you should audition. So I, at that time, they were living in Houston, and, and Amanda was working at ADV. And so they set up an audition. I went down and auditioned and just fell flat on my face. I had no idea what I was doing. And I'd been doing voiceovers for a while. I mean, commercials and stuff like that. No clue what I was doing. So actually, that was a, a, one of those situations that they were like, well, thanks for coming in. And I was like, God, I just sucked, man. That was awful. <laughs> And I sat in my car for like 30 seconds. I was like, I'm going to do it again. And I walked back in. I said, hey, man, could I try it one more time? And they're like, sure. And I went in and just started going, you know, don't go wrong. And doing all these, wow. you know. And they were like, whoa, that was great. And so that kind of started my whole career there, you know. And, and um, I've uh, been very fortunate and blessed to have done a, a ton of stuff. And um, I'm, I think I'm right under Monica in, in anime on Anime Network's list of most prolific yes. voice actors. It's Amanda, Monica, and me, or maybe Lucy's ahead of me. I know I'm the number one male. Male, yeah. You know, but you know that in five bucks will get me a cup of coffee. So, <laughs> but anyway, it's cool. I, I really love it. It's it's a lot of fun. And I never, you know, I don't get to play often. I don't usually land the leads because those are usually younger. Like, uh, not that Vic's younger, but. He has a younger sounding voice, mm -hmm. Todd, uh, people like that, or the girls, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I usually play the villains, you know, and people with quirky voices and stuff like that. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, a lot more fun to me, but yeah. you get to do different voices and different characters and stuff like that. So. Excellent. And um, do you watch anime now? <laughs> uh, a little bit, not a whole lot. I mean, it's, um, you know... I've got uh, three little kids and a wife and a dog and a mortgage and taxes and living the American dream, man. And I, you know, I don't have time to watch much of anything. Yeah. I have uh, three favorite shows that my wife and I watch together. And other than that, I just don't get to turn the TV on even, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just, there's just no time, you know? Um, but every now and then I'll watch stuff. And my kids like uh, some of the shows that I do. I don't let them watch everything I've ever done, uh, but they do. They like some of the stuff, so you know we'll watch it together and that kind of thing. But it's also, you know, it's when you sit here and you do these voices, you know, the last thing you want to do is go home and unwind watching some anime, you know, yeah. like a massage therapist, you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so probably very little. Yeah. And then, um, do you? Has there been a time where you realize, like, wow, I'm, I'm much more popular as a voice actor than you thought you were? Or do you ever have that, like, fan experience? You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's very humbling to me. I'm At first, I was like, you know, it's, I don't know why you care. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm just a voice. 
But I, I, I started to uh, kind of change my tune, and, and I don't mean like, <laughs> I'm the voice of Lord Death or, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, I, it's these dubs that are growing the industry because these people that are watching it don't speak Japanese, most of them. Yeah. So if it, if it was just Japanese subtitles, it would be a much smaller market. But because of the dub, it's a much larger market. It's more, more accessible. And even though we didn't create the voice or the action, or the character, in a way we're, we did because we're doing the English version. And it's the only way these kids are gonna watch it. So, you know, um, so I, I, I do realize the importance as far as being like, you know, um, a celebrity or anything like that. I, when we, we went to a convention in Dublin a few years ago and uh, my wife, I took my wife with me, and she knows nothing about anime. <laughs> and um, we were on the plane, and we were pulling into the gate in Dublin, and I said, look, I, I don't really know how to say this, but, you know, when we get off the plane, there's probably going to be a group of fans that are going to meet us, you know. They're, they're here to pick us up. I mean, not just like the Beatles landing in Kennedy Airport <laughs> fans, but I mean, just, you know, there'll be some people. And she goes, why? And I was like, well, I'm, <laughs> this is, this, I've never lived this down. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> she was like, you're what? I was like, well, it's not I'm a big deal. It's just people think, you know, they're fans. You know, what can I say? So she was like, oh, God. So sure enough, we get off the plane, walk out through customs, and there's like 10 people with a sign, we love you, John Swayze. And she was like, oh, my God. <laughs> So then uh, later that day, we actually had to go to a studio. I had to do some recording while I was in Dublin. And so my handler, Sinead, who is just a doll, took me and my wife out to the studio. We had to ride the train out to 70 miles outside of town. And she's, Sinead goes, I can't believe you get to sleep with John Swayze. My wife goes, you know, it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> so, she nailed me on the big deal thing. So anyway, um, you know, I, I love to, I love it if it gives these guys pleasure and, and you know, if they enjoy what I do, great. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm no different than they are. And, you know, but I'm humbled by their adoration, I guess. So. Yeah, that seems to be a big, between voice actors, they are very humbled. Yeah, yeah. I mean... You know, we're just voice actors. We're not, you know, and even if we weren't, I mean, you know, we're even actors or athletes. You know, you're just a person. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you've got a, a God-given talent. You know, use it to the best of your ability and be thankful you've got it. Yeah. But you shouldn't let it elevate you to some level of, I'm John. I'm a big deal. <laughs> so. And uh, if you get free time, any hobbies that you like to do or? Well, sure. I mean, you know, a lot of it is playing with my kids. Like, I'm, I'm missing my son's baseball game today, which is oh. killing me. But uh, I play guitar, love to play guitar and, um, you know, throw some catch with my son. And, uh, you know, just hang out and do family stuff. Yeah. You know, it's kind of boring. <laughs> I mean, it's boring. It's not like I'm going rock climbing, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's, uh, I, I enjoy it. And, uh, uh, you know, just doing whatever I can, you know, a little of this, a little of that. I know Mike was telling you about it. His house is a fixer-upper, as is mine. Yeah. Although I'm not very handy. <laughs> so I kind of look at it and go, yeah, that needs to get fixed. Uh-huh. Well, better go have a beer. <laughs> Figure it out. Beer's a hobby. I like to drink beer, good beer. And I like barbecue. So. Are you like a beer connoisseur? You go and find new beers? Or? I do like to find new beers. And I like to go, when I go to conventions, I like to find the microbrews that are brewed around that area and sample their offerings cool. you know yeah so yeah absolutely that's a you know, another business that's just booming is the micro brew business oh, yeah. you know yeah so just trying to find a way to combine micro beer and anime together <laughs> and i think we'll really be on to something there you go yeah <laughs> all right well thank you very much well thank you man i sure enjoyed it all right thank you take care you too
we rise mag.com